What's up guys, welcome back to the Daily Stock Picks and in this video we'll be going over the top 4 stocks that you should consider buying right now in September 2020 according to this article by Investors Place. So these 4 stocks belong to the communication sector which is an important sector in our day to day lives. So what I'll be doing for you guys is I'll be reading over this article with my beautiful voice commenting and will be conducting my own quantitative analysis to see whether these four companies either belong in our dividend portfolio or our value portfolio by using this checklist more on that later but if you guys feel like being amazing and awesome make sure that you smash the like button for the youtube algorithm i would really appreciate it i understand that it might be too soon to ask that but hey if this value provides value, make sure that you do so accordingly. Now, without a further ado, let's get this video started. So four communication stocks still holding their own. Communication stocks that stand to benefit from the new world order due to the pandemic by Faisal Humayun. So the novel CVPD has induced several changes in the way people work and communicate. Some of these changes to benefit the communication stocks are likely to become a new normal even after the pandemic dies out. In June 2020 study by International Business Machines IBM indicates that 61% of the respondents believe that remote work will be their primary way of working even after the pandemic. Similarly, Teams from Microsoft is being used by 183,000 educational organizations in 175 countries for video conferencing. Even at an individual level, there is an increase in voice and video chatting. With these changes, communication stocks have been in focus. This column will discuss four communication stocks to buy from the technology as well as the telecommunication sector. Let's deep dive into the following communication stocks. The first company in this list is Zoom Video Communications, ticker symbol ZM. Zoom stock has skyrocketed by 209% in the last six months. The rally is unabated as demand for video calling has increased exponentially. Given the huge opportunity due to the pandemic, Zoom announced that the company has increased presence in 25 additional countries and territories. With this, Zoom is available in 40 countries and territories. Aggressive regional expansion is likely to translate into strong revenue and earnings growth. The growth trajectory is already clear for the company's first quarter results for 2021 with 169% revenue growth on a year-on-year -year basis. The company's revenue is significantly concentrated in the Americas. In the coming years, international revenue will surge. This explains the strong movement in Zoom stock even after the big upside in the recent past. Another factor that is taking stock higher is the growth and free cash flow for quarter, first quarter of 2021 the company reported free cash flows of 252 million dollars this already implies an annualized free cash flow of 1 billion dollars given the growth outlook i would not be surprised if free cash flow doubles relatively soon Clearly, the novel CVPD has changed the way the world communicates. Zoom Media has a big addressable market for the coming years. Okay, pretty aggressive. Let's have a look. The Zoom price to earnings ratio is 472.26, which is definitely higher than the S&P 500 index, which tracks the 500 standards and poor's uh, stocks in the available stock market and it's 29.46 so basically you're paying nearly 472 times for every dollar of earning that is pretty expensive just by looking at the price to earnings ratio we can consider that the stock is pretty expensive right now in order for a company to meet my dividend portfolio it basically needs to meet three or four rules right and these four principles are based upon these three books which I highly recommend checking out. So the rule number one is that the current free cash flows must be positive. So we wanna be investing in companies that are actually bringing in cash into the business rather than just showing the numbers on an income statement, what the net income does. Now rule number two is that we need to make sure that at least 25% of the free cash flows is being retained by the business, meaning that the dividends should not account to more than 75% or more of the free cash flows. 
And rule number three is that the company should be consistently been increasing its dividends over the past five years at some amount of rate. If you want to be on the most conservative side, you can consider 10 years or more than 10 years. And rule number four is our buy criteria. You want to be buying the stock only when the current dividend yield is greater than or equal to five year dividend yield average. Now, I like to use white charts because white charts does a really good representation of this financial information that we're after. Looking at Zoom, we can see that the revenues have been increasing. The free cash flows have also been increasing. Just for fun, if you were to look at it, back in 2017, the, um, the free cash flows were around $4.5 million. Let's see how many times it's doubled. 4.5 double is nine, nine double is 18, 18 double is 36, 36 double is 72, 72 double is 144. Around 40, four times it's doubled in a span of 2018, 2019, 2020, in a span of three years, which is showing exceptional and phenomenal growth looking at these trends. But since the company does not pay out any dividend, it cannot be a part of our dividend portfolio because dividend is the main criteria that we're looking to include in our dividend portfolio. Now let's see if Zoom meets our value portfolio. So in order to meet my value portfolio, it needs to meet five rules this time. So these value portfolio criteria or the rules are based upon these three books. And out of these, I believe the new Buffettology is one of my favorites, which was written by Mary Buffett, who's I believe is the daughter-in-law of the famous Warren Buffett. Highly good read and recommend checking it out. Now, the value portfolio, rule number one, we need to make sure that the return on invested capital is greater than or equal to 10%. We need to be making sure that the company that we're buying into is profitable. A good rule of thumb is to look for companies that have a return on invested capital of 10% or more than 10%, showing that they're actually able to bring in like at least $10 for every $100 that you invest into the company. And rule number two is that it needs to have consistent cash flows. So if you want to be making sure that we are able to predict the cash flows 10 years from now, just by looking at the past performance. And rule number three is that it needs to have a strong balance sheet. A good thumb rule is that we need to make sure that the long-term debt on its balance sheet can be cleared off within six years or less than six years. And rule number four and rule number five are our buy criteria. So we only want to be buying a company if the current price is at least at a 20% markdown from its fair price, which we'll be calculating in a few seconds. And if rule number four isn't met, we want to be buying the company when the company is trading at an all-time, uh, at least a 50% at a discount from its all-time highest PE ratio, and it must be lesser than the S&P 500 index PE ratio. Now, let's have a look at Zoom stock in white charts. So the current return on invested capital is 6.02%. You can understand that it might be taking in a lot of debt in order to increase its top line in order to make sure that it's uh, increasing its future prospects. Looking at the revenue, it has nearly doubled four times in the span of four years. So around 100% return year over year. And so the return on investor capital not, but the cash flows are pretty consistent. It hasn't gone negative or anything like that at all. Strong balance sheet, it has zero long-term debt and it has a pretty good cash position of two point two three two billion dollars a strong balance sheet definitely now let's have a look at the earnings per share or the intrinsic value of the company 0 0.78 is the trailing APS per share and let's see the range at which zoom has been trading over the past five years 296.21 130.21 which is just obnoxious numbers we don't want to be multiplying that with that particular ratio we'll be getting on that a little bit furthermore analysts are estimating that zoom can grow at around 38.46 percent year over year now looking at this if you were to look at the company 
what we're doing in the intrinsic value calculation is we're projecting the future earnings per share by multiplying with the analyst estimates and we need want to be multiplying once we get x as the amount 10 years from now the earnings per share we want to be multiplying with the price to earnings ratio we can either multiply it by taking analyst estimates times two or the average price to earnings ratio we know it's just bananas looking at the earnings estimates based upon the average price to earnings ratio which is around 66,365 which is just a crazy obnoxious number I, to be on the most conservative side we want to be looking at the multiplication ratio of 76.92 which is arrived by multiplying the analyst estimates right looking at this we can see that the company five years from now sorry 10 years from now it will be trading somewhere on $1,122.15 and the fair price at which we should be buying this stock is $318.99 and if you were to consider a 20% markdown or a 20% discount from this fair price we want to be buying the stock at $255.19 per share. Looking at the current valuations, the Zoom stock does seem to be on the expensive side. As a result, I wouldn't be considering this as our dividend or our value portfolio. Now, on with the next company. The next company in this list is Facebook, ticker symbol FB. I would consider Facebook among the top communication stocks to buy. In a changing world, Facebook is likely to play an increasingly important role. In a Harvard Business Review article communicating through the CVPD crisis, the author Paul A. Argenti points out that employee organization communication is critical in these times. One way is to post information regularly in a highly visible location. This can be a physical location or virtual email, the company's intranet, or a Slack or Facebook channel. This is just one example of how Facebook is more relevant than ever before. It also serves as an important medium of interaction and communication among family and friends in the times of social distancing. It's therefore not surprising that Facebook has moved higher by 52% in the last six months from a financial perspective. Facebook has seen a steady increase in daily and active monthly users. The average revenue per user is significantly higher in the US, Canada and Europe as compared to the Asia Pacific. There will be gradual catching up and will increase the company's revenue and cash flows. As a matter of fact, Facebook is already a cash flow machine. For the first half of 2020, the company's delivered free cash flow of $7.8 billion. As cash flows remain robust, the company is well positioned for organic and inorganic growth. Overall, Facebook stock is worth accumulating on any correction and I believe that the stock will remain in a long term uptrend. Now let's have a look at Facebook's price to earnings ratio. If you were to look at this, it's around 36.07 which is slightly higher than the S&P 500 index meaning that it's not on a discount at any scale if you were to look at it. Now looking at F Facebook. We know that it doesn't pay out any dividends. As a result, it can be a part of our dividend portfolio. Now looking at the value prospects to see if it belongs in the value portfolio. So the return on investor capital is 19.88, which is definitely about 10%. Now the revenues have been increasing almost linearly year over year and the free cash flows as well. If you were to look at the free cash flows, we can see that it was around $405 million 2010. So double that 800, 1600, uh, 3, 3.2, 6.4, 12.8, 12.8, uh, around 16, 12.8, 26. So around 50% year over year increase in its free cash flows, which is a really good substantial number. And now looking, so definitely the net cash flows are consistent, strong balance sheet, it has zero long-term debt and $68 billion in current assets, which it can convert into cash within the next 12 months if the company chooses to do so. Now calculating the fair price, we can see that the earnings per share is $18.19. Now looking at the price to earnings ratio at which Facebook has been trading over the past five years, we can see that it's the lowest was around 17.32 and the maximum was around 110.11. And the analysts are estimating that Facebook can grow 
at a rate of 17.05% over the next coming five years. Now, considering the most conservative one, we'll be considering the price to earnings ratio of 34.10. The intrinsic value of the company would be somewhere around $1,151 per share. The fair price at which we should be buying the stock, considering a 15% return on our investment is $327.42. And the right time to buy the stock is when the company is at $261.93. Looking at the valuations, it is slightly on the expensive side and we can see that it has been trading at a 50 time discount when compared to the S&P 500 index. I would consider buying into the Facebook stock as a value proposition at its current price. We might not know if it can drop any further. Ideally $261, but it's not that off. I would still consider Facebook as a part of our value portfolio. This is basically a formula. And this is definitely going to be on our watch list. Maybe you can buy right now and you can dollar cost average like every two, two months to see if you can uh, get the Facebook stock at this particular price target average. Now, looking at the next company in this list is AT&T, ticker symbol T. Zoom and Facebook are in the category of information technology companies in the communication sector. AT&T is my top pick among communication stocks to buy in telecom sector. I also like T-Stock considering the fact that it has been an underperformer at the current price to earnings ratio of 9.2 valuations are attractive. In addition, T-Stock has a healthy dividend payout of $2.08 and a dividend yield of about 7%. Wow. So in terms of a business de development, the first reason is to like AT&T is that the company's launch of its 5G networks. Since the first week of August 2020, the 5G network has been um, launched nationwide. With trends like work from home, the adoption of 5G is likely to be faster than before. The positive impact will be seen in the coming quarters. It was also reported recently that the AT&T is exploring the sale of DirecTV. Uh, a potential deal is likely at $20 billion. This will be good news for T-Stock as the proceeds can help in deleveraging. HBO Max is also another reason to like AT&T. It's worth noting that HBO Max already signed 4 million subscribers in the first month of its launch. Furthermore, HBO and HBO Max have 36.63 million subscribers. The company is focusing on consumers adopting premium unlimited plans to have higher ARPU. If there is success on this front, cash flow upside can be meaningful. T-Stock therefore has several potential catalysts for the coming quarters. This makes the stock worth considering at its current price to earnings evaluation. Now looking at the price to earnings ratio. Okay, let's have a look at AT&T stock. Okay, the current price to earnings ratio is 17.96, which is definitely cheaper when compared to the S&P 500 index, which is trading around 29, 30-ish range. Yep. And now looking at this, the free cash flows are positive at 29.23 million dollars, billion dollars, sorry. And let's see how much this 14.89 billion dollars accounts to. So 14.89 divided by 29.23, that equates to around 50% of its free cash flows definitely meets our second criteria as well, meaning that the 50% of its free cash flows can be reinvested back into the company in order to grow its top line. Now, AT&T stock, let's see how long it's been paying its dividends. So AT&T belongs to a dividend class known as the dividend aristocrats, which have been consistently been increasing its dividends over the past 25 years. So AT&T has been increasing its dividends during this time frame at around 2.21%. The growth isn't that phenomenal, but the years of growth is around 25 years, which does show that it has a good track record of paying out its dividends and the management is focused on paying dividends to its shareholders. And looking at AT&T's current dividend yield, we can see that 
its dividend yield is around 7.04%, which is definitely higher when compared to the S&P, when compared to the average five-year price to earnings ratio. As a result, you can consider AT&T stock as a part of our dividend portfolio. Definitely a buy right now with its current valuations. Now let's have a look at the next company in this list. The next company in this list is Verizon Communications, ticker symbol VZ. Verizon stock has delivered relatively muted gains of 9.7% in the last six months. However, I do believe that the stock is likely to gain positive momentum in the coming quarters. Besides the developments on the business front, I like Verizon stock as of offers an attractive dividend yield of 4.16%. Among positive developments, Verizon has been partnering with states for distance education. The company will be providing discounted services plans for 4G LTE internet. Similar tie-ups amidst the pandemic will help in boosting cash flows. Verizon also stands to benefit from 5G adoption in the United States. The company will leverage on its assets to drive growth, according to the company's Q2 conference call. And if you were, if I were to look into the second half of 2020, we're of course exciting of, for scaling the 5G to nationwide, scaling the ultra wideband to over 60 cities, scaling the 5G home to more than 10 cities, and of course, starting monetizing on that. Therefore, the earnings and the cash flows outlook is robust for Verizon, and I expect Verizon stock to remain bullish. Now, let's have a look at Verizon stock, VZ. Now, definitely the earnings per share is uh, like the price to earnings ratio is definitely lesser when compared to the S&P 500 index. Now we said, so free cash flow is definitely a positive. And let's see how much of the free cash flow it's accounting to. 10.02 divided by 16.91. So around 59%, 60% of its free cash flows is being paid out as dividend, meaning that the remaining 40% can be reinvested back into the business. So definitely a good, mm, good rate payout ratio. And I don't think that it's gonna have any issues paying out any dividends for the coming future. The Verizon stock, it has been increasing its dividends over the past seven years at a rate somewhere around 2.51%. So dividend growth, yes for the past five years, but if you want to be on the conservative side, I would recommend checking out 10 years or more than 10 years, like AT&T has, right? And the right time to buy the stock is when the current dividend yield is greater than the five-year dividend yield average. It's around 4.07 and the five-year dividend yield average is 4.47. Since it is on the expensive side, I wouldn't consider buying the stock, but just for fun, if you were to look at June of this year, it was around 4.44%, uh, 4.44%. In June, it was around 4.51 or in May. Now let's see what the price appreciation would have been if you had invested in the company back in May of this year. So March, April, May around $56 so you would have gained around $4 increase or around 10% increase in a span of two to three months so it's not that much of a growth stock but we can still consider this um, Verizon 11.3% definitely let's see if it meets our value portfolio and looking at the free cash flows, it hasn't been increasing. It basically has been moving sideways, which is not a positive sign to see. But we can see that the cash flows are positive. Don't expect any growth from this company, if you were if you were me. And it currently has a total long-term debt of $112 billion, out of which $37 billion can be cleared off in its free cash flows. With its current assets, $112.84 minus $37.33, $75 billion. So $75 billion divided by seven. It would take the company around 10 years in order to clear off its total long-term debt. 
As a result, I wouldn't be considering buying this company, Verizon, due to this particular reason. Now, closing remarks, guys. So Faisal Humayun is a senior research analyst with 12 years of industry experience in the field of credit research, equity re research, and financial modeling. Faisal has authored over 1,500 stock-specific articles with focus on technology, energy, and commodity sector. As of this writing, Faisal Humayun did not hold any positions in the aforementioned securities. So out of all these four companies, I would look into dollar cost averaging Facebook stock, buying it on the dip as we go down, and AT&T stock for its good dividend yield history. Let me know which one of these four companies that you, you found very attractive. And um, if you think that you should be analyzing the company in a different format or in a different perspective, make sure that you let us know as well in the comments down below. And if you guys have stayed around till this part of the video, I understand that you are the hardcore fans of this channel and I really appreciate it and I don't take that for granted. And full disclosure guys, this video is for your education and entertainment purposes only. There is no guarantee that you'll earn any money using the techniques and the ideas mentioned in this video. This is not financial advice. Please consult your financial or tax professional prior to making an investment in these companies. Thank you so much guys. And if you guys feel like amazing, make sure that you smash the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon so that you can get notified as soon as we post new videos. Until next time, see you in the next video. Peace.